Hallo, herzlich willkommen hier in Bellevue de Monaco ähm, an diesem sehr schönen Abend, äh, wo nicht nur die Männer, sondern ich glaube viele Leute lieber draußen sitzen im Biergarten. Wir sind hier ziemlich unter uns. <lacht> Trotzdem ähm, finde ich äh, es sehr schön, dass äh, unsere Gäste den Weg von Malaga, von Spanien über Wien oder aus Wien nach München gefunden haben, um mit uns zu diskutieren, um ihre Bücher vorzustellen, äh, um ähm, daran anknüpfend auch zu diskutieren, was ist eine solidarische Stadt, was kann eine solidarische Stadt sein, was, äh, was können wir machen, damit äh, Städte solidarischer werden sind. Und ich möchte jetzt hier begrüßen Kike España aus Malaga, ähm, Monika Mokre aus Wien, Kulturwissenschaftlerin und äh, Niki Kubacek auch aus Wien, auch was auch immer, er, er arbeitet. Ich würde vorschlagen, ihr stellt, euch, <lacht> ihr stellt euch selber vielleicht in so einer kleinen Runde vor, aus welcher Ecke ihr kommt, ähm, was ihr publiziert habt, worauf wir uns jetzt ein bisschen stützen und äh, dann schauen wir weiter. I'm not, not sure if you can ask a question uh, for the streaming because the question is I mean if we can just proceed in English or if we should translate in between I mean everything like I, questions yes. can can be in German this is not a problem we can also translate but Kike doesn't speak German so <laughs> in a way we need English or Spanish <laughs> um, okay so I think we just continue in English, and uh, if there are protests and uh, so on, they, they you you can you can tell us, and then we try to translate it or uh, make small breaks in German and so on. Okay. Sure, wouldn't be a problem. Okay, then maybe Kike, you start with presenting yourself. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Uh, um, uh, my uh, yeah, I'm uh, Kike España. I come from from the city of Malaga in south of uh, Spain, um, and I well I participate in basically two main uh, things. One is um, a bookshop uh, called um, Suburbia uh, that is in the neighborhood of uh, Lagunillas, also in Malaga. Uh, and then I also uh, participate in a social and cultural center that is called La Casa Invisible that, uh, well, I will talk maybe later more about it, but basically it uh, started in 2007 uh, and was squatted. And uh, yeah, and then we've been doing uh, a lot of things during these uh, 15 years. Now we are again in a danger situation, but yeah, I would maybe get into it uh, later. Um, I studied architecture uh, and then more move into urban studies. Uh, and that's basically a bit uh, the book, uh, the subcity. It's a bit the result of the of one research that took the form of a PhD in the University of Seville. Um, yeah, so this is more or less. Um, I work on different stuff, <laughs> sometimes paid, sometimes unpaid, <laughs> um, sometimes more uh, uh, successful, if you want, in a way that it gives joy, sometimes more uh, in a frustrating way. Um, and uh, what uh, brought Monica and me together was surely a, a shared... Uh, uh, history and uh, and experiences of uh, activist practices, um, especially in the field of anti-racism. It's also where um, we got to know each other, Stefan, and also where Lisa, is, who is also here, Lisa Riedner. Um, uh, we got to know each other. One context out of the many that then leads to uh, written words, books, <laughs> as the two books here, Actually, we didn't mention yet, I think, but it's anyway in the in the in the in the Ankündigung. But I'm, I'm gonna say it again. So it's the Sanfte Stadt von Kike Espana, um, the soft city, um, and the other one, the book that was uh, edited 
bei Monika und mir die Stadt als Stätte der Solidarität. The city as a site of solidarity. Um, so there's many contexts, of course, that uh, we could all talk about, but I think um, two I want to uh, mention here. The one is uh, for sure Kritnet um, that uh, connects uh, a couple of people here, a network for critical migration and border regime studies. Um, and the other one uh, that also connects a couple of people here is Transversal Text um, that I'm part of the editorial board of that published those books also. I uh, highly encourage you to visit also the website. There is uh, a long history of uh, multilingual uh, web journals also. Um, part of the texts do uh, engage on topics of anti-racism, which is the stuff I care <laughs> about in a way since some, some years and which also led to the production um, and the collection of texts uh, in this book, Die Stadt als Städte der Solidarität. I'm uh, trained as a sociologist, um, but work mostly on questions of political theory that kind of came out of activist practices that I, and especially the frictions and, and, and complexities that uh, uh, opens debates, that a debate that hopefully we also can have today. Yeah, and I'm Monika Mokre. I'm a political scientist working in an Institute of Cultural Studies um, and working on questions of asylum and migration, of democracy, theory of democracy, um, cultural politics and gender studies. And I'm an activist in the field of asylum and migration and a bit in the field of prison and solidarity with prisoners, um, not only pre-deportation uh, jail, but also um, criminal prison. Um, yeah, and as Nikki said, I'm part of, of uh, Transversal and, and EIPCP, which is kind of the, whatever it is, the mother organization of <laughs> Transversal text. Um, and here, because we edited this book, I think this is enough for now. Huh? Yes, everything is about books. <laughs> Traditionally, and and perhaps Kiki, you you can you can present a bit what you have been working on. What was your point of departure? What was your interest in? And and what does it mean? The the soft city, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Um, mm, basically, the, the the book start in a um, uh, in a in a situation in Spain. I will put a bit of uh, context uh, for for you. Um, of the Spanish uh, context uh, of the beginning in the 2011 that was a, a big uh, uh, explosion of uh, movements uh, that we call it uh, a 15M movement because it started the 15th of May of 2011 uh, with a big demonstration all over Spain in many cities and then uh, the most interesting things uh, start there uh, the night of, of where the demonstrations ends. Uh, that is that a uh, group of people, first in Madrid, but then it was sp spread all over uh, different squares in, in all over Spain. Uh, it was that uh, taking the streets and staying there, sleeping there, and kind of occupying the, the space, and uh, yeah, reclaiming for uh, a kind of radical position against not only the, the crisis that rise up uh, from the 2008, uh, but also the, 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 the model that from the transition to democracy at the end of the 60s in Spain uh, took place. So it was on, on one side kind of generational uh, rage, uh, indignados was the call of the, also the movement, but also in a way uh, transversally in the sense of a certain radicality that was already uh, in marginal movements, uh, that in a way took a kind of mainstream, uh, powerful uh, uh, spread, uh, and uh, and yeah, the the, the concrete uh, consequences of of this was were many. Uh, one of them was the the housing problem in Spain was quite hard uh, because of the 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 yeah basically the 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 model in spain is that like uh, at that moment 83 percent of the people were uh, having owning the the their houses 
Uh, so with the, the, the bubble and the real estate uh, uh, crisis, uh, what happened was that many people were uh, with a mortgage without being able to pay, it, so they were uh, being ev evicted, basically. So uh, uh, there was a platform that started a bit before the 15M movement called La Pa, uh, that was kind of uh, fighting against that. So Kinsema, in a way, um, mm, took this uh, as one of the most... Uh, important issues in the in the in the in the country and saying yeah this problem cannot be accepted there are people that are being evicted from their houses their apartments uh, and this is not acceptable so uh, I would say um, a big majority of the people was supporting people who uh, stay in their homes even if they were cannot pay um, even squatting uh, spaces for for living from from the banks and so on. So that was kind of uh, one of the nicest um, position. Then there was all over different topics that were spreading through through society. It was kind of a radicalization of uh, in in democracy in in different levels. At least in the in the subjectivity or in the consciousness of. Of the people there, of course, it was a, also a reaction, uh, and and also a part of a kind of um, filtration of one of these things that was uh, the beginning of, on one side, the the party uh, Podemos that you may maybe hear about it uh, that was born in 2014, and uh, yeah, in a way, it contradicts some of the. Uh, ideas of the movement. There was a kind of a, a destituent power and a kind of a very horizontal and distributed form of organizing and protesting and also, um, uh, yeah, uh, practices in a way and social life. Also a, a big connection with the social and cultural centers, self-organized ones. Um, and yeah, what 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 happened after that was also another movement inside the also the kind of we, what we could call uh, the traditional um, party politics uh, there was a, a, a kind of an I would say at the beginning at least it was a very nice uh, experimentation that was the beginning of uh, municipalism that was a kind of uh, trying to uh, not make a party but really create something that would be more like the or at least uh, that would be more, um, yeah, uh, connected with what the movement was trying to do, but inside the cities, basically. It was only on the, this municipal level. So, um, yeah, this came also with a lot of uh, problems because um, <laughs> um, the, the, be the beginning, the idea was let's do something like um, take the city governments to change the form in which they work. Uh, and at the beginning, it was kind of a very powerful, uh, uh, um, I would say, uh, intention on that. And, and many activists from the 15M movement and from the movements in general were part of these uh, candidatures. Uh, and it was, I think, uh, one of the most interesting experiments in, in, in politics in, in, in the late uh, yeah, 40 years in Spain. Uh, but what happened also was that uh, this was uh, taken by also the reaction uh, from the, the, the right wing and, and, and not only the right wing, also the social democrats and the, the traditional parties. Um, yeah, uh, to take one more thing, at the same time, uh, feminism was also another uh, stream of uh, a very powerful um, form of infecting and affecting uh, the, the movements and the way in which it was working from the 15M through all this decade, uh, with peaks uh, a bit later, in maybe 2017, 2018. Uh, but what what I would I would say uh, it was kind of the turning point. It was uh, uh, around uh, 2018 or something like that when certain candidatures, and, uh, political movements of municipalism, uh, were in a way um, 
seeing that the, the, this idea of trying to change the, the form in which cities are govern, governed and uh, basically against uh, financial powers and uh, all kinds of different powers in the cities and in the state were really not very um, effective and uh, yeah so uh, to, to sum up very quickly um, the book in a way start uh, in this moment after uh, 2019 that was the, the, the second municipal elections after uh, 15 and movement and uh, in, a, in a moment of kind of depression and um, tiredness also of having a boost of energy of a lot of years in which everything was like going up and feeling that uh, you could really change uh, a lot of things, especially in a city level, uh, but also coordinated. Um, kind of a destituent power that would change the rules of what, in a way, started the constitution at the end of the, in the 70s. Uh, but then suddenly there was a lot of uh, limits. So uh, at that moment, uh, yeah, we were on the preface of the book. I started with an uh, email that I uh, uh, wrote to the email list of uh, of our uh, of, of La Invisible, this uh, social and cultural setting, in which we were having these debates of what to do now uh, that we are in this uh, depression in a way. Um, yeah, and arises basically certain ideas or concepts or uh, yeah, forms of organizing and doing things uh, that then structure in a way the books through certain concepts about how the city works and how we could imagine the relation between sociality and spatiality um, that I think it's also important for, for criticize on one side the, the discipline of architecture, urban studies and so on, but mainly Uh, uh, theoretically advance in certain um, critical points that uh, the relation between activism and theory have, have uh, and, and especially concerning the space. Uh, so it was basically uh, trying to abolish this difference between theory and practice and more seeing the theory as a practice and a uh, forming which uh, from the movements there is a lot of learnings that could be also be a, a kind of effective for thinking and doing things and not uh, kind of working and talking with the with the grammatics or the language of of of, uh, of power or of different uh, forms of oppression and so on um, yeah so I don't know if uh, I continue saying something else so maybe we open and then I could uh, continue mentioning like more things maybe if you want about La Invisible or about Malaga or about certain movements, but to not maybe block the debate. <laughs> no, I think it's not blocking, but perhaps we include Nikki and Monica Thanks. into the discussion. And uh, so we have uh, different uh, ways of departure where we can then continue on. Okay. Yeah, great. Then I will say some things about our book and then Nikki will bring all that together and explain what we are doing. Huh? <laughs> That's the point. Oh, <laughs> sure, always. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so while uh, Kiki started up from this uh, situation in Spain and then also especially in Malaga, um, We, I think, started up from this concept or this idea, this also a bit blurred idea about solidarity cities, sanctuary cities, what have you. Um, and uh, we're thinking together first about wh what is in that. Um, also questions like, why the city? Why should the city be especially solidary? Um, there are good reasons. I mean, there are some empirical examples where we say, okay, small villages, in fact, are more effective, at least there are some Austrian examples, in really safeguarding people and really integrating them and, and, and having them in the community integrating in a, in a good way. Yeah? So why do we want about cities? And the other thing is also cities usually have much less power than the nation state and up to some degree also the European Union. So again... Why should we deal with cities, and why is this such a uh, such a big concept? Huh? 
Um, also, and this is uh, the, the question of, and this is also something that is very prominent in the book of, of Kike, uh, the neoliberal city, the financialized city. Um, so where do we find the possibilities for solidarity there? Uh? There's one uh, contribution in our book by Manuela Boyajiev on this financialization of cities. Um, also, we had a long and very interesting talk, which is also in the book with Serhat Karaya Kayali, who did empirical studies about smaller communities in Brandenburg and how they dealt after 2015 with refugees and, and, and makes also very clear that it, uh, in some ways this was maybe more interesting than what happened in cities. Well, still, I mean, we thought, as I think many people think, that the city is a place where different people come together, come necessarily together, where if everything goes well, also people are living who like to come together with different people, and that we can do something with this idea of urban life, which has to do with differences and how to deal with differences. Um, however, we did not really want to have a publication where we show in a very idealistic, optimistic way how wonderful all this is, but rather to deal with our open questions and with the problems we see and to see how others deal with that and, and well, have answers or continue the questions. Um, and one contribution that uh, 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 is one of my favorite, uh, maybe my favorite one of this book, is about City Plaza in Athens, this squatted hotel where this was then where refugees were living. It's a, a contribution by Olga Lafasani, who was part of this team there. And I think she makes it very clear also in these practices how difficult it is and how many decisions there were in that, including that you say, okay, we want to have some kind of model of how to live together solidar in a solidarity, which means, among other things, we cannot just fill the house up to the rim, but we have some, we want some living conditions, some good living conditions which meant that the door politics were super hard. <laughs> People were just sent back to the streets. Uh, but it's also interesting, by the way, uh, not so much uh, with regard to City Plaza, it's also what you described in a bit, this, this relationship to government. I mean, Syriza was never openly supporting that. Still, I mean, they, 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 they closed it down when Syriza went away and with good reasons. Huh? Um, um, then also this this question which goes through the whole book about how can people who have radically different privileges, dangers, whatever, be solidary with each other. There is a, a, a conversation between Nikki and Sherry Abraham where this is a, a main part. We also then, I mean, the solidarity city uh, concept focuses mainly on the question of migrants and migration and how to do that, which is also different from what is uh, what Kik is doing and also what was happening in Spain. But we tried to include also other perspectives on this. And one which I think was very important is a, a, a text which came out of a, a discussion between Roma in, in Hungary and how they are dealing with their situation. Obviously, Nicky also said it in his presentation, anti-racism is a very important point when we talk about migration, and there is a, also a talk between different people, including Nicky, about this question. Um, and then um, we have a bit of a focus on infrastructures and how to develop infrastructures. And again, I think this might be a link to this question of institutions, which kind of institutions. Um, so um, there's one uh, contribution by Sara Schilliger about infrastructures of solidarity. Um, there's one uh, article with Michi Kalivoda was writing with me about uh, solidary production of food, which is also then interesting because this is a very ambiguous thing, uh, this, this kind of urban gardening. This is somewhere between a really solidarity of people who need this food and a, well, a bourgeois hobby. Uh. Um, yeah, with regard to these infrastructures, we also went a bit beyond the cities by talking, uh, for instance, about Alarm von Watch the Met uh, and to which kind of infrastructure this is. Um, yeah, and then uh, we also dealt with different ways of understanding solidarity and maybe also hospitality. And there are two texts which I think speak to each other. Uh, one is uh, by Tahir Saman about Islamic concepts of, of hospitality and how they work 
in essence in squats where these people are living and the other one by Julia Murao Permos uh, about uh, church asylum which again I think is an interesting question is this um, working with institutions yeah and I think I, I stop here with this short description and give Nikki the floor Um, a lot of uh, the stuff um, I thought that kind of holds the book together and I think that is also maybe an interesting uh, starting point we already mentioned actually I guess for both of you but I just tried to wrap it up a bit um, in uh, the following one, two, three, four points. <laughs> Sometimes I like to make points, it's nice. So point one. Um, it's the question of uh, symbol politic, um, about uh, symbolic politics. Um, what does symbol politics, uh, symbolic politics has to do with uh, Solidarity City? Um, it very much lies in the core of uh, the Solidarity City debate because Solidarity City partly is also becoming like, a, um, like an empty chiffre. Um, appropriated also to make cities, and to use a, a word that is important for Kiki, also to make cities more attractive, to make them a space of progressiveness, of intercultural whatsoever, um, uh, versus um, Solidarity City maybe being also um, a, a form of campaign or, or um, a banner under which people can uh, meet, but from like fought from below for so to say um, and uh, I think like sometimes maybe to differentiate where Solidarity City is just an empty chiffre what what uh, we also talked before in the preparation where Solidarity City is like a feigenblatt uh, a fig leaf if this English translation exists um, sometimes I think it's very easy to, to say sometimes I think it's also more difficult to say um, especially because of the next point I'm gonna um, make, and this uh, the second point that Solidarity City uh, points to, and this is the very question, what is the relation to institutions? Um, and especially, what is the relation to institutions when you're not coming from uh, institutionalized politics, uh, be, it, be it party politics, be it um, uh, unions, uh, syndicates, um, be it uh, NGOs, but if you're coming from the street, to put it maybe a bit romantic, um, yeah. So if you if, if if you actually use that the institutions are the agents that you struggle against, um, but then in a lot of struggles, social struggles, and amongst them also anti-racist struggles, we figure out we also often need stuff from the institution, it's, and mainly when we uh, when we talk about anti-racist struggles, it is a part of it is struggling for papers. Who gives the papers? The damned state, right? Um, and who gives uh, access to a healthcare system? Um, the very institution of the Minister for Healthcare, uh, which again is uh, partly a city uh, institution or um, like a municipal institution or partly a, a federal one. So the second question that Solidarity City obviously is not kind of like giving the holy answer to, but I think kind of offering maybe a solution to to deal with this tension um, is the very the very question of the relation between social movements and institutions and I think it's something that I was also very inspired to think both in a more undogmatic and also more radical way uh, through the municipalist movement um, that was very much hinting to this question um, the third question, I think, that also um, very much uh, is related to the very background of municipalist uh, struggles, um, but also um, kind of motivated through probably frustrations we all share, is the, que the big question, how can we connect struggles? Um, some people struggle for better uh, working conditions in... Uh, refugee camps, other people who are uh, themselves they are uh, forced or I don't know enabled to uh, have an accommodation there are struggling for better living condition there. Um, other people are just struggling to somehow sneak in to get an access to healthcare. Other people then struggle for better working conditions on the fields. What Lisa is also researching on, 
Um, other people, again, trying to uh, simply block the 10,000 times another Nazi meeting um, to to block like the, the wave of fascism that's coming again and again and again, like an endless uh, thing. So the big question is like, how can we connect those different struggles um, as a as a as a third uh, as a third I think um, potentiality um, potential of of uh, the question of the solidarity city. How can we connect these partly very different struggles? And of course, last but not least, for sure, like the various different forms of feminist queer feminist struggles um, and the questions of care um, that are very connected to the question of solidarity, obviously, um, and many more struggles. Um, and this also brings me to the last question, the last, um, the last uh, kind of bullet point, um, if you want to make bullet points to roughly kind of get an understanding of maybe solidarity, what Solidarity City can mean, and it's the question, what are we struggling for? When obviously there's so much shit we need to struggle against, which has the big potential to, um, to get frustrated, to get exhausted, and to just uh, actually stop struggling and uh, get a house and a car and a family and be ha live happily ever after and not giving a shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, <laughs> cat, whatever. <laughs> um, so the big question is like, how can we also, and I would not use the word utopia for, for maybe reasons we can elaborate in the discussion, um, but more actually what, are, what, what could it be that we are desiring? What is the form of, of uh, sociality? Um, what is the form of, of commons that we're actually fighting for? And this comes back to what Monica already mentioned, is obviously it needs to be a commons that is not a commons, if you want also a community maybe, of equals, but is a community of obviously unequals. Like Meaning some of us, for example, they experience racism. Me, not. Huh? I, can somehow directly maybe understand what it means through friends and comrades. Me, myself, I will never really get it what it means to be directly confronted with it. What does this do to uh, the understanding of coming together, struggling together, living together, inhabiting a space together? What is this form of togetherness when this togetherness is very much um, characterized by not only one difference, but by many differences? Or, in other words, what does it mean when solidarity is sometimes taking place as a form of coming together by those people that are all directly affected by something, all affected themselves through racism and uh, by racism and uh, kind of ac accuse it in the first person, but also the, uh, there's the solidarity practices that are giving refuge to other people. And it's very different forms of politics. And then again, it's the question like, how do you relate those different um, biographies, struggles, realities, um, uh, and forms of existence and struggling. And the hope, I think, that combines this, uh, this book, which at the same time, Arthur, I think is a question, is if the city and the urban space um, could be like a terrain um, that hints to the fact that in the city there's always different people, right? There's people with a more visible migrational background, there's people with a less visible migrational background, there's people with rather not so much migrational background. Um, but one fact is clear that there would be no city if there would not be migration. Yeah? Be it that the migration happened yesterday, or be it it happened, I don't know, 200 years ago. Yes. You finished your bullet points. Yes, <laughs> with a very open, so. with a very open questions, um, but but uh, um, perhaps we are not looking for like a fixed condition, <coughs> a solidarity city, which is uh, which is uh, reality might be is a totally boring thing, yes, but it's uh, maybe it's rather a movement, uh, 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 moving forward. Uh, um, or a number of movements. You said, uh, how can we combine, how can we bring together the different movements of uh, climate, feminism, migration rights or refugee rights and 
decent housing and and whatever. Um, is it, Monica? Is it is it rather such a movement thing? We are we are in and we are like like uh, searching for the solidarity city, or is it? Do you do you have a uh, an idea that that uh, something which is uh, then realized, uh, which could be a solidarity city. You know, I'm an old Marxist. I have a very clear utopia of a communist society, but um, have kind of lost uh, the hope that I will still uh, live to see it. So, um, but uh, yeah, by the end, I see something which is not only a movement. Uh, but okay, this is it's a bit more than a joke, but it, maybe it's not that relevant at this point in time. Um, it is certainly a movement, and I think, and this is also something maybe, uh, Kiki, you could also talk about that, because, it, I mean, it's a movement in waves, and it's a movement which is sometimes really pff, euphoric, feels heroic, and sometimes it feels like nothing. Huh? I mean, personally speaking, I mean, I, I, uh, I haven't been for quite some time part of a, like a bigger movement uh, and then you do like as you said this individual stuff and I think this is important uh, and this has a lot to do with working with institutions in a way which is like um, denying myself you know this thing I always mention that that I write about once a week an integration letter and I don't give shit if people integrate in this way and I write these letters that they are integrated all over their head much more than I ever was and uh, whatever and they want to live in Austria and they will learn perfect German and whatever there is uh, because they need papers uh, because equality has to be produced so, 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 so. Uh, but I would like, so this is one thing about this, these waves because I think that you uh, lift that that I would like to, like to give the question to you and then I have two uh, remarks that came to me, Nikki, while you were talking. The one thing is, okay, we have these different movements, which if everything goes well, somehow come together and can do something together, or at least have some transversal, transversal connections. We also have contradictions between them. And uh, as, uh, I mean, as a feminist, or even purely as a woman, it's not always easy for me to work uh, with refugees and migrants or with prisoners or whomever. Uh? So not all good things go together. Uh? And so this is something I'm really also struggling uh, by myself because in a way it means that at one point I have to decide what is now more important for me. Is so it more important is, okay, I want that these people have papers or do I say, come on, sorry guy, but you're, <laughs> you're a macho. Uh? So this is one thing, and the other thing uh, I wanted to mention, uh, with regard to this, that we have to work with institutions and with the state and whatever have you, we are now more or less in an ongoing debate since Monday, and what came up, I think, yesterday was the, the difference or potential difference in, in our lives now between the common and the public. And I think this is something that, uh, I mean, the public in the sense of equal rights for all, which is something we want. For this up to now, I guess we need the state, and this is why we have to do these things. Uh, and the, the, the commons, as we can uh, as we can develop them in the society in which we live, are always limited. And sometimes limited in a problematic way. This is what we were talking about yesterday also, that there can be difficulties of access because because this is one group of rather whatever highly educated people or, or simply because you don't know that this exists, whatever there is. Uh, so this also is about this uh, urban gardening or whatever have you. Uh. So I just wanted to, 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 well, to put that in the, in, in the room so that maybe somebody can answer it. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I could... Um say something about uh yeah i think actually the um, one of the um, ideas behind um, behind the uh the concept of uh, softness or what means a soft city and not only a city but a softness between uh, people in a way about uh it's behind uh, i would say different aspect but one is definitely the 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 coming together, and it's uh, it's firstly what is connected with one of the things that Nikki was mentioning, and um, and of course there is a, a lot of uh, violence and a lot of uh, 
hardness in in the in human relations and also in the relations between between humans and other uh, creatures. Um, so the idea of uh, of what means soft in in, in these uh, 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 entanglements is not really uh, let's all become like uh, sweet and nice between each other and all will be fantastic. It, it's actually the opposite, I would say. Um, it's uh, assuming all the violence, all the um, uh, hostilities that are in these entanglements, in this life produced by a, a, a capitalist form of relation and neoliberal form of existence, and then try to work on how to radicalize, do it in another way. Uh, and, and this is something that sometimes goes uh, very, uh, in a very difficult way because it's a, uh, you have to change um, uh, the forms of uh, subjectivity in which we were, in a way, born and uh, r uh, rise uh, up. Uh, but it's uh, a, a, the, 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 the potentiality of, of doing it, it's, it's there. And actually this is, I would say, the basis of uh, solidarity. It's uh, uh, yeah, coming together in another way, not from interest or from uh, this form of relation that are always um, yeah, uh, deteriorated by this uh, kind of uh, powers, but more uh, at something that uh, connects us or connects the the bodies or and other creators uh, in a in a kind of feeling that goes uh, through different uh, bodies and things, uh, and that and this is the, the feeling that it's in I would say in the core of every movement that it's really vibrant that it, that you feel that that thing that is not you it's that you are just uh, vibrating within, and 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 this is what push you up to to change things radically, uh, to, 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 to involve yourself and change, really change, really uh, transform whatever you wear and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and maybe for, forget about uh, this idea of having a, a family, a very nice uh, car and uh, a, a dream uh, American life uh, in Europe or a European life uh, with an American style or uh, however you can call it, uh, with a whole package of uh, a nice life. Uh, then you apparently, uh, in a way, shake this and uh, uh, try to see uh, life and, and, and the forms in which it's uh, uh, produced in another uh, way. Um, and I think this is uh, in, in the core of, uh, of the idea of uh, softness, how to go in this direction, in, the, in this uh, feeling uh, that transform the subjectivity to desire other forms of living. Um, and in a way, uh, what is important, I would say, is not only, I mean, using the waves, this is clear, these intensities of the moments, of movements and this is maybe one of the most important things because are the, like the, the the moments in which uh, collective forms of uh, uh, announcement can really change the desire of a uh, lot of people uh, but then and this is maybe the most important thing classically we will put it as the organization like what to do uh, how we organize ourselves how we create uh, structures things um Maybe with a, a, a bit uh, some changes from this perspective, but with the same um, idea in the background, is how we uh, make these practices more durable, more uh, habitable, in which we could uh, really sustain the radicality and not just leave the moments of uh, movements as something that we uh, uh, use it in a way or visit uh, or. Uh, enjoy it and then say, ah, oh, yeah, it was a very nice idea, but then, uh, yeah, there was these limits and then the politicians didn't want to blah, 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 and we lost. No, no, this is not the idea. The wave will go down. This is clear. No one can live in this in intensity. But the thing is, 
using the ways for changing the political subjectivity and then create uh, uh, this uh, sustainability of the practice that we could call it uh, care or uh, yeah, in, in many uh, ways. But the idea is to sustain it. And I think uh, social centers, or at least uh, the, the way in which uh, in Spain was were thought and uh, evolved, that came in a way from, 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 from Italy, and then there was a kind of an evolution of the squatting and self-organized social centers. At the beginning, it was this slogan of uh, one eviction, another uh, occupation or squatting. This is, in a way, I would say, uh, the model of uh, the waves, uh, uh, or, uh, in a way, the, the model of uh, not being so worried about the sustainability, but that we are in an intensity that maybe cannot only be sustained by young people and uh, people in a moment of politicization in which you need a lot of energy, or maybe extraordinary people that uh, uh, are always like in this uh, position. Uh, but I would say uh, there was an, a kind of a change in, in this uh, form of uh, seeing it, that it's saying, no, no, uh, let's try to not be evicted. <laughs> of course, not... Uh, um, uh, uh, not giving up in any of the things that we uh, stand for, uh, but uh, really uh, trying to make strategies to put all the energy in this space. And th this space is important, and uh, we don't want to move from here. So let's root it here. Let's uh, elaborate things here, and let's defend the space. Um, yeah, and this was, in a way, uh, one of the uh, starting points of, uh, of uh, La Casa Invisible in Malaga, like really uh, wanting to be there and uh, not being evicted. And I think this is uh, important. Um, yeah, and then, and then the, the, in some ways, the, the, the idea of, uh, of softness is also connected uh, with the connections between the space, uh, the spatiality and the sociality. Uh, and and how you can really dissolve this because in the in a way in in, in the uh, city of attractions that is the way in which uh, uh, in the book is explained uh, more or less how Malaga was working in the last uh, two dec decades uh, but I would say most of the European uh, medium and big cities uh, works with global uh, financial capital and uh, tourism. Um, uh, so, how to dissolve this attraction? Uh, this uh, the, the the softness in a way is the the way in which you could uh, mm, dissolve this uh, attraction. That it's also the same process as uh, a politicization in, in a movement. Is you have to realize that this is problematic, and you have to to shake uh, it up and uh, try to build. Uh, something that it's not dependent on these desires that were produced uh, into you and in this case into the city. So how to live together in, in other forms. And in a way it's a potentiality that it's always there. Uh, in every coming together that normally are not in the city centers or in the historical parts of the city, but more on in the peripheries, in the people that are normally excluded. Uh, in, in these places, there is a lot of uh, violence of dispossession and so on, but there are also potentialities of, uh, of uh, gathering together in other ways that are not uh, a mandate of the attraction. Yeah, so this. I mean, maybe just a sentence, I mean, you, or two. Because you said that, but uh, in other words, but um, I was re I, I thought about what Sarah Jimenez said yesterday that it is important in these movements uh, not only to have a future but also to have a present, and this is I mean is something I think which is also really <laughs> um, better reflected than in my in the, the ancient Marxist ways. Was okay, we have you know we have to prepare for the revolution and that's it uh, to say okay. And in a way, I think this is also what uh, what is maybe the point of what you hinted. Uh, so it is it is uh, a movement of solidarity, and it is sometimes uh, more or less successful. But we have to be able to lift that and also enjoy it, not every minute of it, but 
most or sometimes. Yeah. And another image that I like very much when it's about activism uh, is, uh, the, I don't, don't know where it comes from, is that we should think about activism like singing in a choir. Uh, when you uh, when you have to 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 breathe deeply or whatever, and you do not sing like for half a minute, uh, nobody uh, realizes that in the audience because you are a choir, and so we should give ourselves as well as our comrades the possibility to breathe, to to just go out and come back. Uh, what I also experienced many 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 times in different movements was that people were. Uh, working in politics up to complete exhaustion, and then they went out completely. Yeah? So this, how can we give yourselves, uh, ourselves and also the other ones a break sometimes? Yeah? Because some frequently it's also then like uh, that, that, uh, that there's some kind of, you know, um, evocation of guilt and you cannot do that, and especially in this situation, whichever it is, it's always urgent. Uh, uh, so I think this is also an important part of this, or um, or a concrete understanding of my from my side of what you when you talk about care in activism. I also want to add one sentence, um, and it's a song text that uh, actually I have from Monica um, of, uh, that you sent me years ago, and uh, it just came to my mind, and it goes like that. Du lass dich nicht verhärten in dieser harten Zeit, die, die allzu hart sind, brechen. And then he continues, I'm going to translate. Huh? You don't let yourself get too hard in a way, right? Verhärten. Don't. Um, in those hard times, those who are too hard are going to break. And I, I just wanted to uh, share this association with uh, with the question of softness because I think it very much brings together the the question of um, um, or not actually the question but the very fact of a necessity of softness in the context of um, uh, a sustainability of activism, right? Like so, when we when we engage uh, and when we fight. Uh, the cops that want to kick us out of a, a place, like be it like uh, in a more uh, metaphysical way or even even physical way, huh? um, or when we try to blockade a, um, a deportation, um, when we go um, the I don't know which time to the street because of the whatever thirtieth femicide. Uh, when we try to fight uh, another G7 meeting uh, that is happening in some weeks uh, around the corner here of the most powerful people in the world, it's I think it's easier said to not get too hard than actually done. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of actually only underline, like, um, and yeah, to to remind us that it's it's a big task if that we easily forget. I think if we're engaged in like the not-so-soft uh, violent realities of exploitation um, and violence and uh, subjugation. Yeah, maybe I, I could say one thing, because <clears throat> I think this is very um, uh, connected with uh, what um, we were thinking through the last years in Malaga, uh, I mean, with uh, friends and people who are involved in, uh, in different political spaces. And it's like, the, as you said, uh, the, 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 the mayor or the, the most um, radical gesture would not be to fight the hardness of the enemy, if we could put it like that, with their same uh, tools, with the same hardness, is to, to fight it with... Uh, softness and softness doesn't mean uh, being uh, nice with them it, it means to defeat them from what they are from what they uh, means uh, what they are so uh, with with other form of understanding fighting also uh, and and this this is not really uh, something I could put uh, concrete uh, examples of uh, how uh, 
we in a way uh, did it uh, a bit like this in uh, in also in in La Invisible. Uh, one example it was uh, actually yesterday. Uh, I think explained by uh, by Sarah, but I don't remember. I think so. Uh, in the context of uh, 2018, uh, the the La, La, La Casa Invisible was uh, about to be again like now uh, evicted, and there was a, a kind of a um, transversal uh, strategy uh, against the, the the eviction. So one of the strategies was uh, what we called. Uh, las superheroinas. That means uh, actually it was the the feminist uh, group basically of uh, La Invisible uh, having some uh, customs like a uh, superheroine uh, with with a mask and a uh, um, cap. No, a cap. It's here. Uh, a cape. Yeah, uh, and and yeah, like different uh, other elements. And uh, what happened is was that. Um, uh, uh, we were analyzing the agenda of the major, so every day we were, uh, I mean, this group of uh, superheroines, invisible superheroines, were uh, looking uh, to him and uh, making different kind of interventions. And the interventions were not uh, violently trying to, to throw him something or to uh, frontly protest. We're more like... Uh, even uh, having uh, certain alliances with the, the public that were uh, uh, hearing the major acting or receiving him uh, and generating an atmosphere in which um, even sometimes treating uh, the mayor even nicely, uh, saying uh, Paco, which is his, uh, his name, uh, you cannot evict La Invisible, this is a very important place. Uh, so in a way, uh, treating it like him. And this is so much more effective than uh, the direct confrontation, because when you have this direct confrontation, the, the, the atmosphere or the people uh, get a bit uh, uh, like upset, and it's easier for even the police and so on to, to intervene. So I would say this form of uh, softness is not because we are afraid of being uh, direct. We are not afraid at all is that this is much more effective because it, in a way, enters better. Uh, or, yeah, it's like more uh, effective. And uh, then we another example also of the superheroines was an intervention in the main theater of uh, Malaga in which they were presenting the film uh, festival of Malaga. So the intervention was at the same time... Uh, we had some uh, tickets to enter, so uh, uh, the, some activists of uh, La Invisible were like uh, three or four. Uh, some of them were uh, putting uh, like a big uh, uh, slogan in the whole, like uh, five meters long or something like that, like very clearly uh, in defend of La Invisible, not to the eviction or something like that. But at the same time, in in a in a precise moment, and this was uh, televised uh, live, uh, in a moment in which there was a, a, a little uh, 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 pause in the in the interventions, uh, some of our friends were, was two two of them. One was starting to dance in the in the in the hall in the halle in the uh, yeah like in the between seats, and the other one was singing a, a song. Um, that it's uh, Gallo Negro, Gallo Rojo, that it's, it was uh, very uh, famous uh, during the dictatorship and so on. It's a leftist uh, uh, song, uh, which is actually very nice. And the people in the audience and so on, they thought even that it was part of, in uh, a way, the performance. So uh, this is, I would say, a, a, a good example of, uh, of a soft uh, intervention in which uh, you make it very clear that is uh, an invisible um, action, but you generate this doubt in a way and this atmosphere of uh, connection with people. So in a way, the audience was friendly accepting the intervention. And then we are also, through social media and other platforms and so on, we use it directly. We show like the television, uh, uh, part of it, and and this got much more uh, relevance and uh, was much more spread into the people than maybe 
trying to do like uh, like in like uh, the, the the typical guy that enters in a stadium or something like that and has like three seconds of uh, of attention and then he's uh, and people is like ah, another one that is doing his thing. Uh, yeah, in this case, this is I think an example of how this is like more uh, effective. I, I mean, we could call it also that it's a uh, a form of connection with the with with art practices, and this is connected with with the debates that we have uh, yesterday. But to be honest, uh, in all of our debates, the art or anything like that was never part of the game. We just were using tools that we had to be effective. But yeah, of course part of the game. <laughs> um, I was wondering to to, um, to complicate the question of softness a bit and I was wondering about the cracks in the softness because maybe in the fashion of Monica because she, she always likes to kind of put her finger in there's like nah 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 it's not that it's <laughs> easy where's the frictions where's the questions where's the contradictions um, and what I hear in the practices you sh just shared and what I also hear in the practices that Sarah shared yesterday, which was going to cafes and confronting um, the owners, basically with also the forms of exploitation that are happening there in a, some kind of like partly funny, partly maybe if we want, we can call it soft way, but at, at the same time, it's like confrontational. Going to a theater... Um, to crash in there, it's not only soft. So actually, when we talk about softness, I I, I wonder also um, if if softness is net or this softness, what we talk about, like an an, an disobedient form of softness, um, is never only uh, soft. And it, I think um, uh, I think it's also very much like a question of negotiating where uh, where to maybe confront if we want, maybe even attack. Um, those people who are responsible for for forms of violence, for forms of exploitation, and were not any kind of um, uh, like I, I have in mind this uh, very beautiful uh, reflection on the the two uh, subjectivities of of revolution that Bini Adamczak develops in her book uh, Beziehungsweise Revolution. Um, where um, where she talks about the the communist uh, revolutionary um, that is trained to be uh, very hard and unerbitterlich, um, kind of like without any compromise, fighting for the revolution. And when actually um, the uh, the monarchists were kicked out of uh, the palace and uh, and the revolution was won in a way. Then there was another subjectivity, and you talked about subjectivities and form of living also before. Another subjectivity was needed, and that was a very different one, maybe even um, contradictory one to the militant, um, uncompromising uh, revolutionary. And that's the revolutionary that is in a way soft and that is um, geduldig, patient, right? That is patient, that is able to make compromises, um, that has a long, how she says it, a long breath, right? Um, and what I didn't like so much in her book in the end was that this first subjectivity that also needs to destroy shit sometimes got a bit lost. And like the solution is just like we need to construct uh, forms of um, solidarische Beziehungsweisen, right? That's her, her argument. Forms of uh, relating to each other in a solidary way and forms of relating different uh, things in society in a, in a solidary way. But what what she actually talked in the beginning about, that it also needs this other form of subjectivity. So there is, I think, this tension when we talk about uh, resistance, when we talk about uh, revolutionary practices, about uh, disobedience, that there is this difference that I think will always be there and will create a certain tension that we have to negotiate anew every time, uh, in every situation. Yeah, I guess the question is also, I mean, because you said um, the soft approach is sometimes more effective, but um, which effects do we actually have? Which effects do are we aiming for and do we have? Huh? And I mean, in many cases, I think that we all have experiences with, 
we didn't have the effect uh, we, we actually aim for. Uh, it's not like the Invisible is now protected or Malaga is no longer a city of tourism or whatever there is, or people are not deported from Austria or whatever have you. Uh, I mean, and then we can, I don't know, lie in the street in front of a bus and they will be deported and we can have a concert and they will be deported, uh, to put it uh, sharply. So this is, I mean, this is something which for my political practice, if we can even call that, plays a huge and really difficult role because nowadays, I mean, what we are, what I am doing with others is trying to deal with individual cases so that person A can stay, which is good and important, but on the partly a political endeavor because it, uh, we talked about that also before. I mean, you can have always to frame it like an exception. So, you know, this person is especially whatever, integrated, needy, uh, highly educated, or we go uh, to to courts of justice, and this was a never this was never my idea of my political practice that I go to a court of justice, uh, uh, a bourgeois court of justice because we don't have other ones, and if everything goes well, it went well now two times. There's no point. Uh, we win the case, uh, and uh, I I mean it's it's. it's yeah, no, it, it, it's 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 there. There's some kind of satisfaction in that. There's also this way when I'm optimistic, I say, okay, everybody who can stay is a success. But on the other hand, I'm really wondering after quite a, some time of political activism now. I mean, what what have the effects been of what we are doing? Now? Well, to put it also very situatedly, in this case was. Uh, completely uh, what it was aimed for because uh, this action concretely was the, the whole purpose of it was to uh, stop the eviction not only this action the combination a kind of constellation of actions that were effective to stop this concrete uh, eviction and that was uh, effective uh, uh, so this is nice. the, the whole purpose of this action was that, of course, not to change <laughs> like the whole uh, structure of the city power and so on. Uh, this is, was uh, too, too, this would have been too much. Um, yeah, but at least, and this is connected with what uh, uh, Nick was saying. Uh, yeah, in a way, um, what I uh, what I try to to explain in the book is that uh, these exactly that we were you were saying are the holes. Uh, the holes are the, these breaks, uh, and the softness is the way how the holes can, um, in a way, pass through uh, the things. Uh, subjectivity through certain concrete actions and so on. Uh, and to put it very uh, briefly, uh, uh, the, the, the four more theoretical uh, chapters of the book are uh, basically how uh, life is, in a way, trapped through uh, coming from alienation, mystification, and then attraction, that is like more actualized. Then going into uh, how the city is trapped, uh, first by this evaluation of how difference is understood kind of in another way. Um, then going into the, the, the connection between city and the state. If, the, if, if it's the city another form uh, than to the debates as we have on Monday. Uh, and then if there is something that it's beyond and, and beneath the even the city, like this kind of gathering or under communal uh, form of organizing or yeah communal. Um, then is the question of kind of uh, revolution or transformation, like how to break things, because this is completely necessary. You don't, don't only uh, be with things. You need to to do this this continuity, this cut, this break, uh, this hole, um, and then. Uh, what do you do with with these holes? Uh, what do you do you do there? Because the, the the thing of the holes is not only what uh, breaks, but what let pass through it. And this, in a way, is the uh, idea of uh, softness that is connected with uh, sensibilities, with uh, uh, forms in which we uh, relate to each other or uh, yeah inhabit uh, spaces and do things and of course care uh, between each other. And I think care is, the real care, it's always disobedient as, as uh, softness. Can only be disobedient, in, at least in this world, in, in, in the um, uh, Monica's um, 
uh, ideal future, maybe uh, it, it would be not disobedient. Uh, but I think it would be even disobedient in this uh, scenario. You, uh, you need to be always, I think, uh, disobedient. So uh, the, the question of breaking, it's always disobedience. Uh, so I think this is in the core of any really political action. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, this is more or less some connections on the ideas. Um, disobedience is a good is a good uh, thing, but I think it's uh, if you take it in a in a broad sense, it is uh, it is part of every political fight. Every uh, um, if if you follow a certain goal, which is not common sense, which is not uh, in in the interest of uh, political institutions, you have to yeah. Yeah, you have to find strategies to realize it against the will, and and this is uh, this is always a part of uh, being not um, not too close with the interest of uh, of perhaps the majority, the power, um, the institutions, and so on. But I would like to come back to to the city um, as a space which is not a village and not the state. <coughs> Do you think that the city? nowadays is a good place, is a good uh, arena for these fights to, um, to, to uh, improve things different, of different, different groups. Because the state is, uh, is, is far, is high, is uh, too powerful um, to change things and, and in like the city municipalities uh, the people in power are more accessible um, the opinion is uh, is more accessible that that you can like sneak into a theater and uh, and uh, and raise your flag and and say okay we are here also and we are part of this society what do you think well i would think on the one hand yes i think um, especially with what kike said these holes i mean i think it's easier to find them in well in a bigger conglomeration and also, I mean, a bit uh, not so close to the state uh, in the city. Um, on the other hand, I'm wondering how useful it is to, to discuss it on a very general level. Um, I think we have really uh, to look at concrete spaces, at concrete cities, and we have very different conditions there. Uh, I mean, many people, I know many people who live in Marseille uh, without papers or also in some Spanish cities. Uh, whereas in Vienna, this is really difficult. I mean, the, the problem is that there are not so many holes because it's a well-organized city. Yeah? Um, and I think really that, I mean, on the one hand, we have, we should think obviously about what we expect from cities, what we think what is possible in cities. Um, but to do that, uh, I think this was a term that you used in the book, in a translocal way, which means that we really look also very concretely and very detailed on what is going on. Um, in different cities, and where can we connect? Where have we? S where do we have similar experiences, and where uh, completely different ones? Uh, in this sense, by the way, this is. Uh, I'm thinking about that for half an hour now. Uh, it would be interesting to hear from you, Stefan, or somebody else, what is going in Munich uh, on in Munich now with regard to this, to solidarity movements, whatever experiences. Well, that's a good question. Actually, not very much. So we we had in 2018 there was uh, not not really a movement, but uh, in preparation of a conference uh, about solidarity city, we had uh, a number of different um, groups, um, organizations like the refugee councils, uh, um, um, so different different political activist groups and, and, and single persons, also parts, uh, partly from the municipality who wanted to connect. Uh, um, and we, we all together, we organized a conference on different topics like access uh, to services uh, via passport or um, ID, city ID cards. Um, um, the situation of uh, of people in uh, in uh, deportation custody, how to fight um, deportations, and uh, so healthcare, like healthcare for people without without papers, uh, how can we 
how can we improve it how can we get uh, for instance to a to a, a healthcare also for refugees which are partly excluded from the better better the higher levels of healthcare so we had all these different topics together we had this conference and then <coughs> um the so with this conference the power was was uh, was sort of evaded so we had we had some positive responses by the municipality um things like uh, munich uh, declared itself as a safe haven city and and is also in these in these movements uh, of uh, of uh, like um being being open to refugees um and uh, but then things did not evolve did not did not go further and uh, now we are at a situation that we that we see that so some things happened and we have a very like a bit leftish a bit open and and not not strict conservative uh, government here in munich um that some things evolved but we are not really uh, satisfied with this so there are a lot of things still um still waiting to be <coughs> to be done to be improved and so on but at the moment it's uh, so sort of difficult we cannot we cannot continue we cannot uh, um get the, the connect to to the to the movement situation we had um four years yes now four years ago and uh, that brings me to this wave idea yeah so we are, we had this wave and then it uh, went down and now we are sort of uh, seeing how we can bring it up again and um at the moment we have we have so different things like the refugee councils are doing their work and uh, um seabridge the seebrücke uh, movement does uh, its activities and we have these different different fields of activities but not the connection <coughs> and we met with some of these actors we met uh, sometimes but um in my view it is so everybody is so overwhelmed in what what is happening in these different fields like refugees or um um alarm phone or I don't know what <coughs> that uh, there is no no power no, not not uh not the energy to to f to 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 merge to a certain um 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 common common movement at the moment at least I'm not sure so but but that's that's my impression at the moment. May I ask a, a, another short question because you told me before uh, when we were talking that there was like now a protest of of refugees from Sierra Leone and did this lead to a solidarization a kind of you know uh, a movement or whatever a protest including people from Europe people with stable papers whatever. Yes so it 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 could not could not have continued for more than half a year without uh, local support but this is it's it's difficult and 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 different so we need a lot of money to raise because the people need um uh, money for cooking uh, electricity and so on and um and we had a lot of different activities become because they come from from many places in bavaria and uh, after a couple of weeks they were protesting here in Munich <coughs> the municipalities um there said okay this person vanished and uh, i'm no longer responsible so this person does not um 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 lost uh, the the right to have a sleeping place lost the right to have social benefit and and so on and so we had a lot of things to do to get them into these uh, social benefits again and uh, um it was always uh, the point to support this uh, this group of refugees but uh, on the other hand um it was always clear that in this condition in with the bavarian government there won't be a lot of progress in the in the situation they they were fighting for residence permit for uh, the perspective the right to work and so on and and it was totally clear that that there won't be any um any offer from the bavarian government yeah. 
So it was always between assisting and joining this fight for rights because it's it's necessary and it's a good fight and and uh, totally legitimate. And the other on the other side, it it's uh, it was a lot of work of many people counts doing counseling, doing trying also to get to get as you described it to get the single person into. Uh, process uh, of, of finally getting getting uh, uh, the right to stay um, and and this this situation that the, the government won't move yeah so we had a lot of uh, um, notes and visits from different politicians who said oh we are totally solidarity in solidarity with you and uh, but but we cannot do anything for you so on all levels, from the from the federal level bis until the the, the local um, persons here, and this was is is a difficult thing actually, and it does not it does not so it it I think not it's not only me who is astonished that it's still lasting this protest, <coughs> but uh, so I think many said okay this uh, we have it three weeks or four weeks and then it will then it will be over. Um, but still, it is a sign of protest without without that we see any positive outcome for a majority of these people. Yeah. So what we what we think is to take these uh, the, the situations to see the problems and then um, um, evolve strategies that in the places where the people come from, like Passau or the countryside, Landshut, uh, different different cities and villages in Bavaria, that we try to improve the situation to reach the persons where they are there um, and to counsel, to give counseling, to give information, to um, to see how, how we can address the problems they are living in, like totally remoteless, uh, rem remotedness, uh, so far being far from any language classes, any sort of uh, opportunity to work and so on. It's it does not it does not like this is something it which did not um did not uh, like was no no starting point for a movement uh, but but always was in between like um Maybe more about this question of what's going on in Munich uh, may, from maybe a street perspective or a movement perspective that might not, that like different movements or initiatives that might not come together under the uh, he, um, roof of solidarity cities as a category or as, as like a slogan or movement or something, but I think there are several ones that could, that would have the potential if it, that would be the platform that would kind of um, bring things together. Um, uh, first, I think the Sierra Leone refugee protest is like, I have lots of respect for uh, the people coming together. I think it's a, a whole in a way. It's like, it's not only a, a struggle for papers and for, for rights, um, but it's also a struggle for staying together and um, like creating new social abilities and um, I'm very, very impressed and um, and maybe also, I mean, there's lots of support and so it's not it's not only about support, it's also about coming together and dialogue and forming a movement together by um, people who have yeah papers and more privileges maybe in, in Munich and lots going on but also a lot of people are kind of staying away um, so I think there could be more but I, yeah, it's very impressive how I mean, including me like I have supported in some points but I've all and maybe it's also this question of exhaustion um, yeah but I think it's good to to to, to see uh, to look at this protest or to to see um, it's also not only about papers and rights but it's about being visible in public space, in protesting, being disobedient, to use the words you, you've used now, and, and also to, to create these new so sociabilities. And, yeah. and um, I think there's also quite a strong Kurdish movement in, in Munich. 
Um, there was this IAA, the um, uh, Climate, um, the International International Automobile Ausstellung, International um, Automobile, um, what is it, Ausstellung, um, Exhibition also, and there were quite big protests that was in autumn last year. And it continues until now because there was a lot of repression and people um, were had like this lot of anti-repression work following on that. Because, for example, a few people, um, they um, squatted a house. I think it was quite impressive how the protest against the IAA managed to bring different struggles together. There was a, there was a protest at the, um, was it Bosch? Like, um, <coughs> um, um, uh, supporting the struggle of um, in the, in the workers in the industry like um, in, 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 uh, for like, against their them being made redundant um, there was a squad so there was a they, they also brought the, the housing question into the game um, uh, there were um, blockages blockades of, of highways. Um, so lots of different forms of action and different forms of struggles bring, being brought together under like the roof of the climate struggle, feminist struggles as well. So I think that was really ex impressive and there was a, was a lot of repression and I think that's also something quite distinctive to not only Munich and Bavaria but yeah, the Bavarian state is known for quite hard repression and I think the structures in Munich are also prepared for that but it takes a lot of energy. What else? Uh, we know repression from Austria. <laughs> 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 we know that. <laughs> yeah, but I think if you say uh, Vienna is a very organized space with like not so many potential for, not so big potential for holes, Munich might be even more going more, more more going into this this direction but it has it has the, it, it's known for 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 being like that and i think there might be even more holes and potentials than it has the um um hat den ruf <laughs> it's said to be reputation. <laughs> the reputation so what else is going on I mean, I think there's different there's different there was there are different struggles that have actually kind of managed to take some material form but at the same time be recuperated by the state and the city. For example, this place here um, that it exists is actually the success of, of, of a movement. And um, uh, or also like I was involved in a group called Initiative Civil Courage and Workers Center. We organized with day laborers from uh, precarious workers from, from Bulgaria mainly. In the, in the Munich train station uh, Bahnhofsviertel, like the um, neighborhood close to the train station. And um, uh, we organized a worker center, like a temporal worker center, once or twice a year, a, a week for several years. We've stopped with Corona mainly. Somehow it's, we lost, it, we were exhausted and people went away and we did not uh, manage to reproduce our structures. But um, there is like a um, city uh, f um, a space, like a um, um, info, like a um, place for consultation, and um, also f where people can stay, like a small cafe that is um, financed by the city um, that still exists. And um, we also were protesting um, with homeless, the, like homeless people who uh, don't have access to the regular homeless shelters. They should have access, but the city doesn't give them access to the regular homeless shelters. So they, uh, they, the city created this humanitarian shelter where the conditions are much worse. And in the beginning, people could stay there only with minus zero degrees. And now they can stay there the whole year round. And that is also not only, but also the result of protests of homeless people, migrant homeless people mainly, who protested for, for, for who demanded that. And I don't know, so a lot of different things are going on that I think are often not visible when people think about Munich. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but I think it's, it's, in Munich it's often, it's uh, like you do a protest and then the municipality, they decide, okay, you get a counseling center or so. Yeah, it, 
sometimes takes a year or two until uh, such a decision is, uh, is made. But um, this is this is often um, bringing down any sort of protest before it can become a movement. Uh, the municipality said, "Okay, you you don't get everything, but you get something." And uh, you get some money to run like a counseling center, and then uh, then uh, it sort of the protest is covered a bit. And and uh, so I think this is in 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 certain in certain things it has been it has been uh, the practice um, not to not not to bring people really into into some sort of protesting thing, but to say okay, we. we yeah, we we give what you want, or we give you a part of that what you want. Yeah. Which is at least something, no? I mean, as we said, uh, movements usually also protest movements they have their waves also because of exhaustion, and I guess we all were parts of movements where we didn't get anything, and still it <laughs> ended at one point. So at least you have then a, whatever it is, <laughs> a counseling center. Uh, but I just wanted to say it really uh, this question of of translocal networks, and I think this is also something which. Because we we go until exhaustion in our uh, local whatever it is initiative, we neglect that, or I at least I neglect it frequently, and I know from other people in Vienna, which is really a pity, yeah? because I, I mean, for instance, this question about uh, this 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 um, uh, quarters for homeless people and then migrants, especially migrants without um, uh, legal papers uh, documents, cannot enter. We have that in Vienna with very with many half solutions like one house where if you know that is they you know they can enter but they also then have to leave in the morning and whatever have you uh, or we talked about that today kick and me uh, i mean it is known in spain that the agricultural workers and the exploitation uh, um, it is less known that we have also some of them in austria i mean uh, not so many because Austria is a smaller country, but in terms of agriculture, they play a huge role. And this sezonaric campaign, which is trying to um, to help these many many from Romania and before also from Ukraine, but this is, is usually work for men. They cannot come now, huh? which is also great because now <laughs> these this big agricultural businesses they are complaining. We cannot find people who want to work. Uh, well, you could also try to pay them, uh, uh, I mean, a, a decent salary. Uh, this is how it goes in capitalism usually. Uh. <laughs> so it's a, it's a big problem. What do we do with us, our asparagus or whatever? But anyway, so this, this, yeah. Um, I, I, but it's, uh, we say that so many times, uh, but it would really, I mean, I think we could learn from each other and uh, even if you're just loosely connected somehow and, and kind of from time to time exchanging. Uh. It's what you said, Monica, it's very interesting because it's the same argument that the, the owners of, of the restaurants are saying in Malaga. Uh, they say uh, before, in a way, the, the reclamation of the the, the, the people saying uh, you should pay more the people who are working in the restaurants or, and they argue it's not that simple uh, you are being demagogic and you are being no no it's completely that simple <laughs> if you pay more people will uh, work there I, I, I assure you especially when it's kind of a semi-slavery work in which they said this is also they even defend that Publicly, they said, "No, no. In the world of in the world of uh, restaurants and bars and so on, uh, people work half time, and that means twelve hours. So half time, like half time of the day. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they make these jokes that they pay half time, uh, like four hours, uh, but people should work twelve twelve hours. Uh, so yeah, this. But coming back to the translocality, I, I think this is." And maybe one of the most uh, interesting also potentialities or uh, and also what you were saying about cities at, at, as uh, in a way scales uh, of action and I, and I and I think it's, this is the the, the, the most in interesting thing uh, and a city if we call we can call some moment uh, a city a kind of a, the, the to the constellation of holes that we are able to make in a city. Um, and uh, the, so the translocality would be 
not really about the cities, but about the holes that we are making in the city. So it's kind of a constellation of, uh, of holes. Uh, that it's what I think it would be very interesting. The crossing borders, any border or any kind of limit of what is a city or not, or a state or uh, even a continent. Um, and I think working in this direction is something quite uh, interesting and excite, uh, exciting. I mean, to come back to the question, I think that kind of brought us together here is, it, does the city um, uh, give a good terrain of struggle, right? Um, and... Monica answered it in the, in the way that we have to see about which city we're talking about. Um, but I think also it's you can also ask this, this question generally. And um, the, the there was a certain uh, a certain feeling that generally, or maybe not only in some concrete spaces, but generally the the city gives the space for progressive politics insofar that they show that the people who are living together, they're not the community of sharing the same passport. They're not the community of look like the, 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 the people living in Munich or the people living in uh, Vienna. If you look closer, they're not all Austrians or they're not all Germans and what you consider German and like white um, and so forth. Um, but that in a city it becomes, and I th this is the hope why a city can be like an interesting space to do politics rather than on the national level, that the city shows that the community is always a space of heterogeneity, of different languages, of different uh, biographies, um, of difference as such. Um, and therefore it can uh, provide... Um, uh, uh, um, on some levels, uh, quite an interesting terrain, especially when we talk about heterogeneity, especially when we talk about difference. At the same time, we also talked about um, uh, climate struggles. And there, after this uh, book was released, I got a bit engaged in the climate struggles in Vienna, which tries to blockade. And also, actually, yesterday, there was a big demonstration. And on Saturday, they tried to um, they not only try; they will. Uh, they will uh, make a big fuss on the SPÖ Parteitag, like the the party gathering of the Social Democrats of Austria, um, because the city uh, government of uh, Vienna really tries to push, with all its ignorance, this uh, another huge uh, um, highway project through that got actually blocked on the federal on the state level, right? So that was actually very interesting for me because the book uh, that uh, Monica and me published was also not only motivated by the question, can the city be a site of solidarity, but also very much by the hope and also by facts being made that the city is a space of solidarity. And city government often, when it comes to deportations, when it comes to some form of more institutionalized, maybe anti, what you may be, if you want to be very affirmative, call it um, anti-racist uh, policies, that the city is more pro progressive. Sometimes, huh? And then uh, always. Yeah. 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 I just want one thing that came now to my mind. You, it's heterogeneity within the cities. I think one uh, advantage, especially for these translocal connections, could also be that we have some kind of not homogeneity, but similarities between bigger cities. I mean, this is this comes out of globalization and we can like that or not. And I think in this way it's also easier because also when we say, we, we even had this debate, I think, once in Malaga about cities around the Mediterranean. And I mean, this is, I think this is feasible that we say, okay, let's talk between Malaga, Marseille, uh, Tunis or whatever it is. Whereas I think it's not really feasible to say, let's talk between a, a, a village in Austria and a village in the south of Tunisia. So, the, uh, I mean, the, this is also, I think, one point which could help with regard to cities. Shall we leave it like this? And I understood that we are, with this evening, we are part of a, of a travel which started perhaps, I don't know, in Vienna at least, which is tomorrow 
continuing in Augsburg in the Grand Hotel Cosmopolis, also a project where activists wanted to create open space for different persons, for refugees also in the center of the town. And uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it also. It was interesting, inspiring, and I think it will still work um, in in future. And uh, and uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. And Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks for the invitation, and thanks for the listeners. And for those who want to know more, check out transversal.at. There is more information on the two books. Also, there is also more information on the upcoming book tour that is in Augsburg. That there is another stop in uh, Köln. There is another stop in uh, Stuttgart, another one in Berlin, and then in Hamburg. Um, yes, thanks. So yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and thanks a lot for the invitation. Huh? Um, yeah. to yeah, you're Stefan. very, very welcome. Yes. And this is how the books are looking like. And it's really worth uh, to look into them. Yes. Okay. Thank thanks you very much.